If you don't want to sit through this intro, that's fine. There's an introduction to this series. You don't have to watch it. You can skip right here to this timestamp if you don't want to listen to me wax on poetic. Hey everybody, Garden Sound and Lila the Bird, and here we are with a brand new segment called DIY Studio. This is a passion project of mine that I'm hoping you all are going to appreciate, but I've noticed a trend and it's scaring me is that I see a lot of people either investing a lot of money and gear before they really know what they're doing or people like me who are just broke YouTubers who can't actually afford like a modular, but I want one in order to make cool noises, but I can't afford one. So the option is DIY. I'm very passionate about DIY. I basically built this entire studio myself. It was an unfinished basement when I moved into this house three years ago. I built all the sound treatments, I built this desk, I built everything. Um, my wife and I. Uh, so I was introduced to um, Eurorack and modular synthesizers by my friend uh, Mr. Bill, as well as by watching Andrew Huang's videos. And then I thought to myself, man, I'd like to do that, but I can't afford it. You know, ah, shucks, I guess that's just not something I'm gonna be able to do. Um, and then I looked up Look Mom No Computer, who's been a huge inspiration for me over the past couple of weeks and months. Um, and I saw that he's building his own modules. And I said, surely that can't be expensive. So I looked up like parts lists that are common for these modules on Mouser, and they're incredibly inexpensive. Very affordable if you know what you're doing. So with a soldering iron, a drill, a saw, and just a couple of bare essentials for DIY, I'm gonna take you guys through the process. If this is something you're interested in and something you're hype about, you have to do two things for me. First, make sure you're subscribed. Second, hit the thumbs up button share this with somebody. Your view is your vote. If you like this series, make sure you watch it. That's all I'm asking. It took me a lot of time and effort to edit this up and get it to the quality that I like. Um, and I, I think this is going to be silly. Informative um, and, and, you know, a process that I'm going to enjoy myself, which is very important to me. This also officially brings us into season four of the show. So the last episode you saw was season three. Now we're in season four. My seasons don't really have like timestamps or dates. I just decide when the show is officially on its next iteration and that decision came down and it's today. So let's head over to the workshop, which is going to be my set for this series. So what we are focusing on, I have a whole box of cool stuff. Our first project on this DIY adventure is going to be from a company called Synthrotech. Synthrotech is a really cool DIY modular company. And if you haven't figured it out by now, we're gonna be building our own modular. So I'm gonna show you all the stuff you're gonna need, all the pieces and parts in this particular episode to build your own modular case. So for this first episode, it's gonna be really simple. All you're gonna need is a 3D printer or maybe a saw, a jigsaw, maybe you can cut these panels right here that I'm gonna show you how I made out of wood. So you might need a jigsaw. Um, you're definitely going to need a utility knife, um, and you're going to need some cool parts from Synthrotech in order to make this thing possible. Uh, so step one, got to get this tape off, and you're going to use your utility knife to do that. Just cut the tape, just like that. We got these two rails, and we need something to attach these rails to, which is where the 3D printer comes in today, because I have printed a rack side that is specifically designed for this part, from Thingiverse. Links to that in the description down below. If you don't have a 3D printer, there are recommended dimensions for side panels. I will include some in the link down below. Feel free to trace it on a piece of plywood. Um, probably a piece of half inch ply would do. Um, and then cut it out with a jigsaw. You're gonna put two holes in it just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to attach the rails to this and it'll serve as the foundation for our box. But you guys wanna see some 3D printer porn? So right now, I just worked on the second side panel for the Eurorack box. So I'm gonna have to pause the episode for a minute until it's done printing that. Whoa, Gardner. You showered and put glasses on. What happened? Went for a bike ride. Because these side panels take a surprisingly long amount of time to print. I've got both the side panels now, and what I'm gonna do is attach them to these rails. You guys can't see what I'm pointing at. Change the angle. So I'm leaving the sides open for now, but I might close them in later with acrylic. But these screws drill right into these rails. They're self-tapping. I love the attention to detail on this manual and how they made the logo look like Ikea. <laughs> this is my bench vise. 
You might be saying to yourself, Gardner, that's not a bench vice, that's just two bricks. Well, you're wrong. It is a bench vice. It's a free bench vice. Give these things a good push when you're putting them in, because like I said earlier, they're self-tapping, and they actually have to bend the aluminum uh, rails a little bit in order to make their grooves. Uh, there are not any grooves in there, so you're actually making, uh, you're tapping the aluminum as you drill it in. Not necessary to have a drill. You can use just a regular screwdriver, Phillips head. Next, we're gonna make a back panel. I'm gonna cut this out of some scrap wood so I can attach this power supply that I will be building in the next video. Here's that piece of scrap wood now. I'm gonna measure this roughly uh, and mark it off with my pencil. Bird break. The only necessary components in order to consider this some sort of a synth rack are rails, a back plate for a power supply, which I will be building in the next video, and end caps. So while you guys are looking at Lila here, I'd like to take a minute to thank Synthrotech for partnering with me on this video. Their kits are super easy to follow. If you want to take a look at their merchandise, I'll put a link to that in the description down below, along with links to basically everything we've talked about in the description down below. Good bird, Lila. What a good bird. Good bird. Now that I've cut that panel, I'm going to go ahead and buff it off a little bit with a piece of... Uh, sandpaper here just make sure i don't get myself a splinter and boom fits perfectly drill some pilot holes and oh wait a minute i forgot to put the freaking nuts in so these nuts right here and these screws right here go in to the slots on the rails all right taking the side bolts out so i can drop these nuts in things really don't want to come out of there <laughs> anyway so I'm gonna sort these parts out these little bins right here are absolutely essential if you're doing small parts like this it's something I did earlier this summer was buy a bunch of these clear bins from Uline and they're just I have them all over the place now they're great for holding things because uh, I was constantly dropping stuff on the floor Yep, so as you can see here, these nuts fit right into the slot. I feel really dirty saying these nuts so much. Talking about nuts and slots. Nothing to talk about here. This was just a really cool shot. All right, so now that all the nuts are in their corresponding slots, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the panels again. And now we're gonna attach this back plane. So we're gonna use drywall screws for this, and it's absolutely essential to drill pilot holes, especially when you're working with plastic, and especially when you're working with something that has as many threads as drywall screws. Um, so you wanna make sure you drill nice pilot holes um, straight into the wood. I've started drilling pilot holes a couple of months ago. Um, since then, no pop-outs, no splitting. Um, and everything's held together really nicely, so um, can't advocate enough for pilot holes and having two drills really helps um, Although you could do this with a hand drill. I don't currently have one I was fortunate enough to buy both of these DeWalt screwdrivers from Lowe's on a sale at the same time um, And they've, they've been they've been really nice next I'm gonna put all these m3 three millimeter screws into their nuts using this awesome driver that I bought on Amazon Prime Day. Um, it's really cool because you can hold it in your hand and spin it. So I don't have to uh, hold it with two hands, I can just you know hold it with one hand and spin the drill. I did have a time lapse of this, but it got really boring, so I just decided to use movie magic to make this complete. There we go. It didn't come with quite enough um, M3 screws, so I'm gonna have to buy some at the hardware store, but here's some glamour shots. There's some the self-tapping screw there and the side panel from the 3D printer. And yeah, that's basically it.
Well guys, there you go. We've got our DIY modular box. That was all for today's episode. Next time I'm gonna be taking you through how to build the power supply with the kit from Synthrotech. Again, big shout out to them for partnering with me for this series. It's definitely not perfect, but it's mine. I made it. And if somebody's like, where did you get that box? I'm gonna say, ah, I made that box. There's something about that that feels awesome. If you decide you're gonna follow along and build this along with me, do me a favor, go to the about tab on my YouTube page and grab my email and send me a picture or a video of whatever you've made and I'll include it in my next video. I'm very excited to see where this goes. Um, and as always, my name is Garden Sound. This is Lila the Bird. If you'd like to see more, stick around for the end card. We'll see you next time.